We're here in Bedford, Massachusetts in iRobot headquarters. This is where they make the Roomba robot, the little vacuums that have been cleaning up our houses for over a decade. We're going to go downstairs and learn the origin story with the CEO, Colin Angle. I'm John Biggs and this is TechCrunch Makers. I'm here with Colin Angle, CEO of iRobot. He's going to run us through what it took to make a robotic vacuum cleaner, essentially. The idea of a robot vacuum cleaner, I think in its ideal form, is a robot that you put in your home and every day goes and vacuums, and you may never see it, uh -huh. but you come home and your floors are thoroughly vacuumed, you never touch it, and that's a perfect solution. Now, getting there, has sure. been an incredible journey. And I can only imagine what the first Roombas looked like. It was probably like Rosie with like her feather duster running around the Jetsons house. Is that what it looked like first? Well, let's, let's walk through it. All right. right. Um, <laughs> this robot fetch actually is where the technology was, was uh, pioneered. This is a mine hunting robot uh -huh. that was designed to go out into a field and thoroughly cover that field. Um, this cylinder in the front contains a pulse eddy induction radar and then could be used to find the metallic objects and pick them up and bring them to safety. Now, this was actually specialized for grenades and cluster munitions which didn't go off. So okay. not deeply buried mines, but things that might have been used in war and be lying on a battlefield that would need to be cleaned up. All right, so this was fairly scary technology that had to deal with a fairly scary situation. Uh, what came next? What we needed to learn as a company was how to make inexpensive, complicated electromechanical robots. Here, in cooperation with Hasbro, building velociraptors. Here we have some robots that we call Meeps, even a uh, robotic baby doll, uh, where depending on how you play with it, its face uh, changes and it smiles. Now, there's one element that is obviously missing from the Roomba story right now, and that's how to clean. Uh, we were lucky enough to partner with Johnson Wax. Uh, they came to us with a challenge, how do we automate uh, industrial cleaning? And uh, that led to this project to create the next-gen floor care robot. And uh, here's a system where in one pass it would sweep, then it would um, scrub, and then the third part, uh, there's a cleaning, a polishing disc here. While that was not ultimately a big success for us, we had all the elements that we needed. Right? We, had, we knew about robotics, we knew low cost, we knew cleaning, we knew how to navigate. This is one of the earliest Roombas. Uh, you can see it doesn't even have a vacuum. <laughs> this would have a, an electrostatic pad on okay. the bottom. This was launched in 2002. And y you, know, you can see that it uses brushes. Um, to pick up debris uh, and then the vacuum runs behind it. It would uh, move around and clean a room okay. with a push of a button, um, but still missing some key elements. It wasn't automatic and the brushes, if you had a lot of hair, um, either from your head or from your pet, you needed to maintain that uh, that system, fringes and carpets and cords were also a and problem. And how much sensing did this have? Obviously the fetch had a much more robust sensing system. How much sensing was in this? The, uh, the fetch system knew its boundaries uh -huh. so that many of the sensors on there had to do with defining what the edge of the field was. Okay. Uh, this robot depended on walls and doors and the virtual wall system uh -huh. creating an infrared beam that the robot wouldn't cross to pen it in. So that was a simplification we could take advantage of. So this was sort of a radar almost. Yep. The Roomba scheduler where the big idea was, again, in your ideal world, the robot turns itself on, vacuums, and then comes back and plugs itself into a dock when it's finished. Well, that's pretty cool. Uh, we also added this dirt detect feature so that as it was moving around cleaning your floor, if it saw some dirt, it could dwell and on the bottom. And how would it see the dirt? Because I've always actually wondered that. Well, the, um, I'll show you. The, uh, if we take the brushes out, you can see these two that looks like two gold quarters. Uh -huh. These are actually microphones. 
and so that as it was cleaning, if it picked up some dirt, okay. they come in and they the dirt taps on these microphones <laughs> and the computer can read that signal. The 700 series added actual optical sensors. The dirt comes in and you have the same microphones, but you also have optical sensors to see the carpet fuzz coming in. If you have a pet, then you want a Roomba. The challenge is uh, the pet hair can get wrapped around brushes, not just on robots, on any vacuum cleaner. And if you want to be able to efficiently vacuum, then you need to come in and clean the pet hair off the brushes. What we've done with the Roomba 880 is invent a completely new way of cleaning. These are Aeroforce extractors, flexible cylinders with these echelons uh, that uh, replace bristles. And why is this cool? Well, the air actually is channeled between these two rollers and the, that narrow gap acts like a nozzle which accelerates the airflow and amplifies effectively the suction power of the robot. It's just a thousand details to make this work. Like many inventions, you can say, well, that makes sense, but <laughs> how come no one thought I of mean, it we've before? Had, we've had brushes for a hundred years. As, well, I would even say longer because we've been brushing stuff with like willow branches or whatever for, for centuries. Well, I think that this new design is uh, would be great on uh, not just robot vacuums, mm -hmm. but vacuums in general, so that you could eliminate the maintenance required for the, for the brushes. But it's certainly, when you want it to be no touch, when I want this thing to operate for years, ideally with you never mm -hmm. interacting never with it other than to empty the dustbin, uh, don't, you, you don't know, it drove have, this uh, need. Don't people create relationships with the Roombas? Have you, have you seen that happening? We have people in over, I think over 80% of people name the robots at this point. <laughs> uh, there is a relationship, but I view that as cool, but... This is cooler. This is cool. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Colin, thank you very much. This is Roomba from mine sweeping to amazing pet hair grabbing. Thanks a lot well, for thank showing you. us around. We cover a lot of ground. All right. Thank you. I'm John Biggs with Makers. Thanks for watching.